Hi, my name is Mozart Dito. I've built a few Swift Towers, so I'm going to lead you through the process of building the Kyle's 12-foot freestanding tower using basic tools. This video was made to help give viewers a better understanding of the construction process and is not intended to replace the Kyle's book. First, we start with the form for the foundation. It's made with two 2x10 two by, by 8 foot pieces of lumber and will be filled with concrete. Measure and cut each piece at 48 inches and 45 inches. Build the form using 3 inch deck screws and put it aside. Then we start on the interior section of the tower. We will build three sections that stack on top of each other. The inner chamber of the tower is made from textured T111 siding. Swifts hang and build their nest on the textured side of the material, so we make sure to cut the material face down and that the grooves of the textured side are perpendicular to your cuts. The sections consist of a narrow side and a wide side. Be careful to mark each section with a W for wide and an N for narrow. Place arrows pointing to the notched side of the material. These notches and rabbited ends will allow the sections to stack. Once all the strips have been cut, assemble two of the three boxes or sections. Each section should be assembled with the grooves facing inward and the arrows pointing in the same direction. Use two wide pieces and two narrow pieces for each chamber. Make sure that you use one and a quarter inch screws to assemble them. Make certain that no screws protrude into the interior of the boxes as they can harm the swifts as they fly in and out of the tower or land in the interior sections. Next we will work on the bottom tower section. First trim the rabbited edges off the remaining narrow and wide section cuts. Build this bottom section as before, making sure the cut ends are all on the same side. This will be the side facing down towards the ground. Cut two pieces of one and a half inch lumber to 14 and a half inches and two pieces at 11 and 7 16th inches. These pieces will be the cleats to help support the bottom of the tower. Using two inch deck screws, install these pieces on the inside and even with the trimmed end of the tower section. This will be facing down towards the ground. Next, prime and paint four pieces of one and a half inch angle steel, which will serve as the legs for the towers. While it's drying, we can start on the bottom vent piece for the lower section. Using three quarter inch treated plywood, measure and cut a 15 by 15 inch square to act as the bottom for the tower section. Next, measure for a grid of ventilation holes 1 and 3 8 inches apart across the span of the piece. Drill the marked grid using a 3 8 inch wood paddle bit. Towers can overheat without these openings and lower the success rate of swift eggs hatching. 3 8 inch is also the best size to keep predators from entering the tower. After the holes are complete, attach the piece to the cleated bottom of the tower section using 2 inch deck screws. When the paint on the angle iron has dried, install a piece on each corner of the bottom section using self-drilling screws. Allow three feet to extend past the bottom of the section. Space the screws about six inches apart and be careful that no screws protrude into the interior of the tower for the safety of the birds. To prepare the braces, measure and notch cut eight pieces of 12 foot one by four inch lumber. These notches will fit around the angle steel legs that are attached to the bottom section of the wide and narrow sides. The 12 foot sections will eventually be cut into 16 6 foot pieces. We decided to make the final 6 foot cuts at the tower site location. Now we prepare the top of the tower using our 3 quarter inch plywood. Measure and cut a 17 and 1 quarter by 17 and 1 quarter piece of plywood. Right. 
Then measure an offset hole that is 6 by 11 inches. This will serve as an entryway for the birds. It's best to use a wood paddle bit to start the hole and then use a jigsaw to complete the cuts. This is where the bird will enter the tower, so be sure to sand the edges smooth. Next, we will make the sun collar that is attached to the top piece of the chimney swift tower. Basically, we will be making an eight and a half by 13 and a half by eight inch box that sits over the entry hole. Measure and cut these pieces using more three quarter inch plywood. Connect the long pieces to the short pieces using one and one quarter inch screws. The sun collar reduces the amount of light reaching the interior of the tower, keeping it cooler. Using two inch deck screws, secure the sun collar onto the top piece and over the entry hole. We found it easier to flip the top over and secure the sun collar from the underside of the top. When all the main elements of the top are complete, paint it with a water-based latex to help it last longer in the elements. Because it is flat, we also run caulk along the bottom of the sun collar to reduce the amount of rainwater entering the tower. The tower we're building here is for Bowview Elementary School in Gulfport, Mississippi. We will have video surveillance, so we're creating an additional hole in the top piece to accommodate the mounting of the camera. Approach this hole identically to the entrance hole using a paddle bit and jigsaw. We cut a piece to cover the hole, which the camera will be mounted to and pointed downward to capture the activity of the swifts. We like to position the foundation form cardinally east to west and establish the south and north side of the tower. Place the form into position, mark the area, and remove the form box. Excavate a flat bottom square hole that is approximately three inches deep. Next, stand the bottom tower section in the center of the form box. Because we use six foot angle iron, we dug out an additional foot of soil where the angle iron legs meet the ground. After positioning the bottom section, secure it in a perfectly vertical position using a framing level, 2x4s, stakes, and 3 inch screws. When the bottom section is level, install a grid system of rebar at 1 inch below the top edge of the form box. The book calls for 3 8 inch rebar in a very specific fashion. I would suggest following those instructions. We had some old scrap metal laying around and decided to recycle this material. Regardless, make sure that the metal angle iron legs are tied off to the metal in the form using tire wire. This creates additional strength for the tower. Next, we mix the concrete. If you have access to a cement mixer, by all means use it. If not, the gravel mix concrete can be mixed using a wheelbarrow. Most importantly, follow the instructions on the bag. Pour the mixed concrete into the form, level it off, and skim the top for a more finished look. Let the slab in the bottom section cure for 48 hours. After the slab is cured, remove the bracing from the bottom tower section. Next place one of the remaining tower sections on top of the secured bottom section. Make sure that the arrows on both sections point in the same direction and that the wide and narrow sides match up or they will not interlock. The sections may need to be tapped into place. This interlocking method is one of the brilliant design details that make the Kyle's Tower a pleasure to build. The next step is to take our 1x4x12 foot lumber and cut 16 pieces at 6 feet long. These are the pieces that we notched in the shop to accommodate the angle iron on the bottom section. Once again, be sure to only use one and a quarter inch deck screws to secure the notched one by four inch pieces over the corners of the bottom and middle section. Once all the corners are installed, a ladder can be safely leaned against the structure to complete the tower. 
Next, install the top section in the same fashion and install the remaining 1x4s on the corner of the tower. Now the tower is completely self-supporting. Towers can become very hot during nesting season and reduce the chances of the eggs hatching. The airspace that is created by the 1x4 support boards is a perfect space for insulation material. Measure and cut 3 quarter inch rigid insulation board to fit these spaces and nail into place on all sides of the tower. We are going to use classic board and batten style sheathing using inexpensive cedar dog-eared fence boards. Really, the way you skin your tower is up to you as long as the predator guard is installed. After the sheathing is complete, attach the sun collar to the top of the tower using two inch deck screws evenly spaced. Once again, be sure to place the opening on the northern side of the tower. Finally, the last step is to install the predator guard, which consists of 24 inch flashing installed at the top of the tower on all four sides. The predator guard helps deter animals such as snakes, raccoons, and squirrels from eating eggs and chicks. Once the flashing has been installed, remove the form around the slab, level out the surrounding area, and clean up. Now your 12-foot freestanding chimney swift tower is complete. To order the book on how to build your own chimney swift tower, visit www.chimneyswifts.org.